Hey guys, Comfort MC here. I'm going to be a little adventurous today and try to do a little Big Planet Vita tutorial. Specifically today we're going to be talking about memorizers and these little stars that you often see in app style games and how to use a memorizer to implement those without creating some huge monster complex system. Uh, and so I've got this little uh, fake level here that I'm going to be using as a framework for uh, this tutorial and what it is is I'll just select the level and it'll load up uh, it's gonna be the same level regardless of what number you select but maybe the gameplay will change or whatever and then you you choose how well you want to do on the level and then you win and I want that to show up in the bottom of the level that you've selected so if I had selected level 2 it would show the same screen but it might show a different number of stars and I want that to be memorized and I also want it to uh, to not be overridden if I get like fewer stars the next time I play and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to show you really quickly uh, what this little level setup is going to be like. So when I land here, and it looks like I've already triggered this, let's see if I can rewind again if it'll undo it. Alright, there we go. Um, so when I land here, I just have a, a little counter set to 1 that creates a pulse and it turns this movie camera on which has an infinite duration so it'll stay looking here uh, in this view for as as long as it's able until another movie camera comes and overrides it and that just gives us uh, this this view that we have and then when I select this first level I just have a touch sensor on here and that tells me this little red menu tag We'll say, okay, we're going to trigger a different camera down here. Let's see, I've got that here. So that when this red tag lights up this tag sensor, which has an infinite radius, and it, has, it matches that menu tag, it'll trigger this other camera, which will show this view. So it'll stay on this view forever until we touch the win button. And on the win button, we've got a blue menu tag, which will send us back in a loop up here to trigger this camera again when it hits the or when this tag gets activated tag sensor gets activated excuse me so that's the the basics of just going back and forth between our two views here but that's uh... that's not really what i want to talk about today it's this memorizer uh... stuff so how can we use this memorizer to to memorize these stars that we've got here now your first inclination might be to to make the first second and third port on this memorizer be the first, second, and third stars on level one. Uh, but that can be a little messy when you have uh, a different, when you like get the third star but not the first two, it might show up differently than what you want on here. So instead what we're gonna do is on each one of these stars down here, I've set it up so that you can toggle it on and off with a touch sensor. And when it's on, it'll activate a yellow stars tag. So all of them have this yellow stars tag on here. Stars, stars. So if all three of them were on, we'd have three tags lit up. Now we're going to use the fact that the number of tags that are lit up can create a signal using uh, tag sensors to our advantage here. So what we're going to do up here on our microchip, I've already got one set up, but we've got a tag sensor set to stars. It's got an infinite radius and it's set to count and number of tags required 10. So if there were two tags lit up, since the number of tags required is 10, this would output a 20% signal. So we could then use that to say, okay, 20% signal, that must mean there's two stars that have been activated, and that's pretty much how it's gonna work here in our memorizer. So let's just go ahead and wire this straight into our memorizer here. And that will put that the signal in there, so if I have three stars lit up 30%, into the memorizer, which will store that once we trigger this activate input on the bottom here. Now, a perfect time to trigger or store this memorizer is when we click the win button, so when we're done with the level. So we're pretty much going to do that. Let's just make a copy of one of these tags. wire that in here and set this green and let's say save so it'll be green save tag so when this tag gets lit up that'll tell our memorizer to save itself now we want also 
I've set up something here so when you return to the level all the stars turn back off and that uses this level reset tag which is also activated when you return from the menu or when you return to the menu from playing the level so I'm just gonna add a small delay to this uh, so that we give the we give the memorizer time to save before we reset this reset the stars and I'll just set up a timer to do that so we'll just do 0.1 seconds and start count up the reason I set that told that to reset itself so it'll count up for 0.1 seconds trip both those tags and then turn off which will give us a short delay but be just like we had touched that and those tags had lit up when we touched them okay so we've got this green sensor here this green tag sensor set to green save also set to count I use count for pretty much everything just because it's uh, so optimized it's quick and it doesn't have all the additional stuff included with the default closeness setting and then we'll set this tag sensor and wire that up into our memorizers store signal here and so now we have to figure out so now when we play that level it'll store the number of stars we've had and we're gonna have to figure out a way to uh, get that data out and turn it into these uh, these discrete digits here and I'm gonna use a little bit of a trick to do that um, and it's gonna involve a little bit of basic math and one of the new tools that we've implemented in in the little big planet Vita which is kinda nice so I'm just gonna set up a 10% battery I'll need that in a second what I'm gonna use to turn this si uh, percentage signal into an on off type signal is use a 0.0, .0 timer for both the, the target time and current time and set the input type to uh, speed scale so this has a special behavior so that if it has any percentage signal going into it then it'll activate so if it's got like a 10% signal that'll light up if it's got a 1% signal it'll light up in this case we're going to be interested in increments of 10% signals so if we have any stars down here so if we have say one star down here that's going to get stored in this through this tag sensor as 10% and then in the memorizer it will show as 10% and so since 10% is greater than 0 that will activate this uh, this timer here which will be our first star okay so now we need a way to check if there's if it's at least or if it's bigger than 10% say 20% so for se the second star so what we're gonna do is subtract 10% from this signal and I'll just use a direction combiner there which is of course subtraction and then subtract the 10 percent signal and check again is the signal greater than zero if it is then it'll activate this timer oops missed and that'll be our second star so if we have 20 percent signal coming in from the or stored in the memorizer it'll be 20 percent subtract 10 it'll be 10 percent and it'll uh, go off to this timer and activate it. If we only had a 10% signal coming in, it'd be 10% minus 10% and zero, so the second star wouldn't be lit up. So we would only have the first star lit up, not the second star, and we'll do the exact same step for the third star. We'll subtract another, another 10%, and this would uh, be used for detecting a 30% signal coming in originally from the memorizer. So we'll just take the same signal and subtract 10 percent from it so if we had 30 percent coming in minus 10 20 percent minus 10 10 percent which is more than zero and it'll activate this timer here which will light up our third star okay so at this point let's see what we got so we select level one say I want one star and win and that is reflected it's stored in our memorizer let's just it's stored in our memorizer here uh, go away timer or uh, movie camera we have 10% stored in our memorizer which activates this first timer when we subtract 10 there's no more signal going in don't worry about the wire being lit up that's the digital component not the analog component so there's no percentage going into this so it won't light up the second or the third star now if we select it again we get two stars win there it saves our two stars 
and we can do the same for three stars. But you'll notice a problem when we play it again. We'll hit 10% win. It's now showing we only got uh, one star, even though we've previously gotten three stars. So we can go ahead and fix that. And I'm not even going to bother rewinding. One thing to be wary of when you're working with memorizers is that uh, tripping the memorizer, hitting this activate signal, that uh, creates a rewind point in create mode. So really you should be testing a lot of this stuff in play mode uh, just so you don't accidentally trigger things that you don't want. Uh, so the problem that we had was this signal that's coming in from our stars, the number of stars, is overriding the signal that was in the memorizer. We can fix that pretty simply by just throwing an OR gate in here and taking the OR signal, or uh, taking the higher of the two signals coming uh, going into that. That's what the OR does. So if we have 10% coming in from the stars, but we've already got 30% stored, when we trip that memorizer again, it'll say, OK, well, 30% is higher than 10, so we'll store 30%, and it'll remember those three stars. So let's see what we got here. We've got no stars mem memorized. Let's say we get two stars. We win. We play it again, and we only get one star. It's still going to remember those two stars because we put that OR gate in. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause this. All right, so that's pretty much the basics for memorizing this, this star stuff. But we want to be a little more thorough in that some, we'll sometimes be playing different levels. And we don't want it to store the number of stars every single time uh, because we might not be playing this level. So instead, what we're going to do is make a little condition, a little AND condition for the storing of this. And the, uh, the condition for, the other condition for this AND gate will be that we are in fact playing this level, not level 2 or level 3 and so on and so forth. And I'm just going to use a really nice trick with the selector to determine whether or not we're playing this level. So when we select the level, we're going to store that position in the selector which will go to our AND gate. If we play a different level, what we're going to do is reset that with the selector. And this selector is being reset every time we hit the menu button. Or in other words, every time we return to the main menu from finishing a level, it's going to tell us, OK, we're done with that level, and another level will be possible to be selected. You could play the same one again. Uh, and we're just going to make sure that the selector is defaulting to port 2. So it's going to be on this port. Let's just unpause. It's going to be on this port to start. And then when you touch and select it, it'll reset to port 1, telling us, OK, we're able to store the memorizer signal here. And of course, returning to the menu was in this win button that we set up. And we're just using a double purpose for it. We're using it to reset the fact that a level has been selected and also to reset the, the camera on the main menu there. Okay, so we've got a basic working logic, and I'm just going to copy that over to level 2. We're going to have to make a few little tweaks to it because it is level 2. I'm just going to close this. We don't need that anymore. So this is still the first star. This is the second star. And of course the third. Um, we're still going to have the same menu button being triggered, but we would have like a level 2 that we could input here. We don't have it triggering anything because there's not really any gameplay involved in selecting the different levels. But if you had like a, a puzzle game, this would tell you your other logic in the puzzle game that level 2 has been loaded. All the other logic is pretty much going to stay the same, except that we're now not using the first memorizer port, we're using the second memorizer port. So everywhere we're using the, the first port in the first setup we did, we just switch that over to the second port. And there. And this is just for my own sake, so I know what signal is being stored in the memorizer at any time. But that's pretty much it for level 2, and then we do the exact same thing for level 3. We just change all the memorizer ports to level 3. And of course, this could be extended up to 32 different levels. 
Or if you wanted to be adventurous, you could use more than one memorizer and get a higher number than that. Let's just quickly wire this up here. And we'll pretty much have the logic done for remembering the stars on our memorizer levels. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we have one level, or two stars in level one. If we win with one star, it doesn't override because we did better before. We could get three stars. And there it remembers the three stars. Let's say we played level three and got one star. Or we played level two and got two stars. And all of that will be remembered even when you uh, leave and come back to this level. And then I've set up a reset button. I'll just show you what that is before I trigger it. This reset button is just the same memorizer with the same level, label. That's uh, one important component of this is that in order for these memorizers to work across level and in order for these memorizers to be used in different places but still have the same signals coming out, we have to have a label to them and it doesn't matter what that label is. And then I just set up a touch sensor to the reset input on the memorizer and I also added a little sound. So now when I touch the reset button, it resets all the stars. You may want to include that anytime you're working on a level like this, even if it's just for yourself, just so you can uh, you can play again from the beginning or have a quick way of resetting while you're playing. And that's pretty much it. We've got a uh, star system uh, implemented for these app style games, and it's a really nice application of these memorizers. And it doesn't get super convoluted when you start adding lots and lots of different levels and trying to figure out what memorizer ports match up to which level. You just have to worry about the first level is the first port, second level is the second port, and so on and so forth. And this is also one of my favorite new subtle features of Little Big Planet Vita is that these timers set to 0, 0.0, they'll activate as soon as there's a, a positive signal going in there. If, if it's negative, it won't trigger. It's, it has to be positive, but it's really nice nonetheless. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, it's better to follow the link in uh, the description. I check that way more often than I would check the videos. And I thank you guys for your time. Hopefully this wasn't too bad, uh, being the awkward recording setup. But uh, if, it's, if it's good, I'll hopefully have some more for you guys. All right, take care. Bye-bye. The tutorials will unleash not only exciting tools and objects, but knowledge and the deepest secrets of the cosmos.